Hi, I'm a Learning Advisor at James Cook University and I'm here today to share with you successful steps that students walk through as they go through their study semester. So successful students connect and it's something that A grade students do. Successful students connect in a number of ways and one of the surefire ways of connecting is creating your own study group or study buddy, finding and meeting someone in the very first weeks of your semester and looking at how you can come together and create your own study group. Successful students talk and interact in class and share ideas. So if you're wanting to learn in an active way and get the most out of your studies, make sure you're asking questions in your tutorials and workshops. Make sure you're talking and connecting with your peers and sharing your ideas and getting feedback. There are many other things that successful students do too and that's using uh, the resources and information that is out to support you. This includes your subject outlines and all of the information in LearnJCU, your subject sites, as well as all of the interactive tools like the chat windows from the library, uh, emailing certain areas like the Learning Centre and even uh, communicating with people within your Learn site. So successful students also spend time on task reading purposefully and critically and in this video today I'm going to share with you some strategies for doing that so that you can really work um, smarter not harder. And successful students spend time on task writing and preparing the assessment items as well as taking notes, active note taking in class. And we're going to look at some of the strategies you might employ as you embark on your semester. So there is a key reason and uh, reason for reading at university and it's important to identify why you have been asked to read what you have. Perhaps you are following up after a lecture. Maybe it's in preparation for a workshop or you may be simply researching, starting to research for an assignment. So understanding why you are reading information is paramount to understanding tasks and what you will do, the micro steps. Now if you want to get the most out of your readings and read purposefully and critically, there are a number of things you can do. You can follow a reading technique and a reading technique that helps you scan or skim using the texture, not the texture, rather the text structure of an article, a chapter or a paper to help you find and locate key information using titles or subtitles or even understanding the structure of a journal article so you can locate where results are communicated or key discussion points. Now, critical readers also actually ask questions of what they're reading while they are reading. You can read your papers section by section or you can recite answers to key questions that you may have formulated before you dive into reading a paper. Now, reading critically is also a powerful tool for reviewing what you are learning. Now, making notes, checking definitions, learning new words and key concepts and theories. Now, to read critically, you need to develop a whole gamut of skills in interpreting, understanding and significance of data sets, clarifying meaning and also analysing. You will see the word analysing embedded in your subject outlines, your task descriptions and marking criteria and subject learning outcomes. And Analyzing is all about breaking down information and recombining it in different ways for a set purpose and context. You will also be asked to evaluate, to judge the worth of key ideas and concepts and really assess the credibility and strengths of key concepts, ideas and theories that are presented in your readings from week to week and as you search and sift through the databases to find key information to support and back up your position for an assessment item. You will also be required to employ reasoning. That is all about creating a judgment uh, 
an argument through logical steps on key ideas and concepts. So creating an argument, how you build and pull together your own reasoning based on your position or topic. Now we can ask critical questions about a text as we're reading and I would encourage you to formulate questions uh, before you dive into any journal article, book chapter or set reading for your week weekly readings and the kinds of questions that you can ask is what is this text about, uh, where is this information coming from, who is included in this text and these results may actually formulate a description, so creating a one sentence summary of what the text is about. It's also important to question the text in terms of how was the research carried out, why was the research important, Is it, was it to ascertain a gap in the research and uh, what might follow on from here in terms of analysis. And then it's stepping away from what you're reading and asking why is this important and what may follow on from here. And this will result in an evaluation of what you are reading. Now, if you look at the slide that is before you, there is a template for critical note taking. It's a brilliant, simple strategy that you can employ to get the most out of your readings as you're reading in the moment. Instead of reading something from left to right, taking some notes or highlighting, and then coming back weeks later to redo the same task. No one has time for that. So working smarter, not harder is all about using your time effectively, purposefully and strategically. And this critical note taking template is one key way to do that. You'll notice at the top of the template, you'll see room for putting down the reference information from what you're reading. And then it's broken up into three main categories where room for you to familiarize yourself with the text and describe what it's about. There's space to describe with evidence from the reading any key research concepts or ideas and space for you to put in a page number. And the bottom of this table is reserved for coming up with that interpretation. What does this all mean and how does it connect to other ideas in my task or in my weekly readings or what I've heard in lectures. Now students who use and employ the critical note-taking template in their study, it could be from a weekly lecture or leading up to an assessment task, can collate all of these uh, scholarly note-taking templates and start to plan out and create an assignment from it. A deck of these for every week are also a powerful way to create your own study notes, especially when you need to remember and retain uh, and access under stressful conditions like exams, key theories, concepts and ideas. So it's definitely worth something uh, worth trying out this semester as a key strategy towards success. Now, another key aspect of study is note taking and listening will be important in this process. So listening, we listen to repeat ideas, paraphrase, where we actually take the original idea and put it into our own words and reflect and look at connections. So when we're repeating information, you might be writing down concepts and key ideas word for word and you can use key ideas and key definitions. Some students create glossaries in the back of their lecture books to help them keep all of these ideas in the one space. Paraphrasing is that simple act of using your own words but conveying and summarizing the information that is the original information. And that reflection is to think deeply about what you've heard and write notes in your own words, but also to combine uh, ideas from multiple sources. There are many ways that you can take notes as you study. Some people prefer the linear approach in your notebooks, writing notes from left to right. You may use some colour to underline or create boxes to allow ideas to be more visually uh, available to you and jump out. Now, some people prefer to use colour and simple uh, words and uh, that's in the form of mind mapping. It is a powerful tool to help your brain remember information and it may be a strategy that you would like to try out this semester. There is lots of information and links in this slide to uh, go and try out mind mapping for yourself. 
Some people like to use concept maps, that simple idea of a key idea centered in the middle bubble and subtopics radiating out uh, to allow you to really look at the relationships formed between key ideas. Another strategy that some, pe some people employ in critical note-taking is the Cornell method of note-taking. It's another scholarly note-taking template where you can have space uh, in an organizational frame to write down the key notes and ask key questions of the text as you're reading and it, there's also space to have all of those reference details. Some students love electronic note-taking devices and templates and apps and there is a whole gamut of apps available to you like OneNote or Evernote. My advice would be to download a few free apps and try them out for yourself. See if they work well for you. You can take photographs of key lecture slides, you can make notes, you can actually download recordings and put in videos to help you combine all of the ideas uh, together. Now taking notes in lectures is one of the crucial active strategies for learning that you will partake in and it's important for you to think about referring to things like subject outlines and subject uh, learning outcomes as you go into each lecture. It's important to limit the notes that you will take. Students time and time again come to the Learning Centre and share how their strategy for note taking, filling up several uh, notebooks over the course of a few weeks, is not really productive and they're struggling to uh, to retain the information and retrieve the information under stressful conditions like exams. And my advice is always to these students to take less notes, to really make sense of the notes, synthesize and comprehend the notes and put it in your own structure that's meaningful to you. It's very difficult to retain and retrieve lots and lots of information but if you're chunking it and breaking it up or using some of those templates it may be a more productive strategy for you and it's worth trying out as you lead towards success. Now, it's also important to perhaps, you know, create abbreviations and acronyms for key ideas so that you can retrieve them under test conditions as well. And uh, I want you to really take a moment to think about what strategies, active strategies you will employ this semester to get the most out of what you are reading and what you are learning. So whichever note-taking strategy or template you use, remember there is one really important thing to do and that is to put what you are reading or what you are hearing into your own words so it makes sense to you and reflect on what you are reading. Why is this important? Not just simply writing or rewriting the original source make connections, go back to the subject learning outcomes and see how it's connected. Go through your subject-based calendar at the back of your subject outline to see how ideas relate and connect or build on one another. Now remember, successful students connect, so ask questions, make friends, form study groups and remember that there are many other students who are going through the same thing as you. So take some time to explain what you're learning in your study groups to each other. Build off each other's ideas and support one another as you go through the semester. So we've covered so many key messages in this video and the idea is that you can start and stop and employ and download some of the templates and try them out this semester for yourself. But I want to recap. It's so important to know your subject outline. There is powerful information in there to support you. It's also important to prepare for your lectures and your tutorials each week formulate key questions. In lectures, actively take notes and employ active listening strategies. Connect with your peers. Manage your time and invest time on task and participate. Step forward and be active in your own learning journey. 
seek help when needed and it's a beautiful time in this video to share with you and remind you of the powerful support strategies located around the campuses. So on the Townsville and Cairns campus you can drop into the learning centre located in the library on the ground floor and you can also book an appointment with a learning advisor. Learning at jcu.edu.au is all you have to do to make that connection. You can also use some of the amazing resources like Studiosity to receive feedback on what you are writing and what you are working on. So I implore you to use some of the resources available and also check out the great resources on the Learning Centre website and follow us on Facebook. It's JCU Learning Centre and we will keep you up to date with great study tips and motivational means to uh, make you follow your path and your long-term goal every step of the way. Thanks for joining me today.